गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन लास्ट लेक्चर वी डिस्कस अबाउट एनवायरमेंटल पोल्यूशन इन जनरल एंड इन ब्रीफ वी आल्सो डिस्कस अबाउट एयर पोल्यूशन इट्स डेफिनेशन सोर्सेस एक्सेट्रा इन टूडेज लेक्चर विल टॉक अबाउट द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एयर पोल्यूटेंट्स ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ डिफरेंट पैरामीटर्स and at the end we'll also discuss about the effects of air pollutants on the environment so let us start our today's lecture first of all the classification of air pollutants we can classify air pollutants on the basis of different parameters into uh, various categories first of all we'll see that how can we classify the air pollutants on the basis of their source of origin on the basis of source of origin we can classify the air pollutants as point source pollutants line source air pollutants and area source air pollutants if the air pollutants are coming to the environment from a fixed point or a fixed place then all such air pollutants will be termed as point source air pollutants the example in this category could be the air pollutants coming out of an industrial chimney we know that uh, in most of the industries whenever a product is uh, made it result into release of different kinds of pollutants into the environment the air pollutants comes out of the industry through chimneys in the form of uh, gaseous air pollutants as well as some solid particles so all such gaseous and solid particles which are coming to the environment from industrial chimneys are termed as point source air pollutants because they are being released from a fixed place or point the second category is line source air pollutants when the air pollutants come to the environment from a fixed path or a fixed line then all such air pollutants are known as line source air pollutants the example in this category could be vehicular pollution from the roads we know that roads and highways are a fixed line or a fixed pathway on which vehicles run from one location to another location and during their movement the pollutants release into the environment through uh, the exhaust in the form of exhaust gases so that road or highway can be termed as a line and all such pollutants are termed as line source air pollutants the another example under this category could be emissions from the rail tracks as well as emissions from the airport runways the third category is area source pollutants when pollutants are released into the atmosphere from a large area where we cannot identify a particular point or a particular line or pathway through which the pollutants are coming and when these pollutants are released from a very large area all such air pollutants are known as area source pollutants the example could be methane emission from the rice fields as well as emission from the waste disposal sites all such pollutants coming out to the environment from these two sources will be termed as area source air pollutants the another classification of air pollutants could be again on the basis of origin on the basis of origin we can classify these pollutants as primary air pollutants and secondary air pollutants the primary air pollutants are those air pollutants which are emitted from an identifiable source a place or a source which can be seen through the naked eyes the example in this category could be emission from the industries emission from the vehicles etc because we can locate that particular chimney through which the pollutants are coming to the environment in an industry and that chimney is identifiable that's why all such pollutants coming out of the chimney 
will be termed as primary air pollutants. These air pollutants could be oxides of sulfur, carbon dioxide, smoke particles, dust particles, etc. Another category is secondary air pollutants. Secondary air pollutants do not have a fixed source or a fixed location from where they come to the environment. Rather, they are formed by the combination of or by mixing of one or two primary air pollutants in the atmosphere. Suppose in the atmosphere, carbon monoxide is coming through the industry as a primary air pollutant. And oxides of nitrogen are coming from the vehicles as a primary air pollutants. When this carbon monoxide and oxides of nitrogen mix up or combine in the atmosphere somewhere and if they form a new pollutant, then that new pollutant will be termed as secondary air pollutant. So these secondary air pollutants are formed by combination of uh, more than one primary air pollutants. The example of secondary air pollutants could be acid rain which are formed by combination of uh, oxides of sulfur, carbon and nitrogen with the water vapors in the atmosphere. Another example could be tropospheric ozone which is formed by combination of carbon monoxide and oxides of nitrogen. So these are examples of secondary air pollutants. Another method of classifying the air pollutants could be on the basis of state of matter. On this category, we can classify the air pollutants as gaseous air pollutants as well as particulate air pollutants. Gaseous air pollutants exist in the gaseous state at normal temperature and pressure. And examples could be carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide as well as nitrogen dioxide. The particulate air pollutants are such air pollutants which are either solid particles such as smoke particles or suspended droplets such as acid fumes, mist etc. or it could be mixture of both mixture of solid particles and suspended uh, droplets of acids etc. So any kind of solid particle be it natural or artificial or we can say natural or man-made or any kind of suspended droplet of acids etc. or mixture of these two will be termed as particulate air pollutants. So on the basis of state of matter we can classify uh, these air pollutants as gaseous and particulate air pollutants. Now we will talk about the effects of air pollution. The air pollutants cause various types of problems to the human beings, plants, aquatic life, buildings, properties as well as the total environment of this earth and we will see now the effects of air pollution in different segments of the environment. First of all, effects on the human beings. If human beings inhale the air that has high concentration of these pollutants, then it may result into various types of health problems to those human beings or people. The most common health issues which are seen among the human beings because of air pollutants is respiratory and heart problems. The air pollutants if inhaled in excess can cause chronic bronchitis that is inflammation of lung tissues. It can also result into emphysema disease uh, and in this disease the oxygen carrying capacity of lung decreases. It can also lead to lung ca cancers in <coughs> severe cases as well as heart attacks and heart strokes. The air pollutants if uh, inhaled in excess can also result into uh, less absorption of oxygen by the blood and in such conditions uh, a situation arises that is known as carboxyhemoglobinemia. 
and in this uh, condition the patient <coughs> does not get enough oxygen for uh, nourishing the body tissues and it results into uh, the uh, letharginess uh, tiredness and in extreme cases it can also lead to the death of patient also so uh, most commonly respiratory and heart problems are seen among the people who are exposed to air pollutants the another effect could be on uh, the children uh, the high levels of air pollution during the pregnancy can cause miscarriages premature uh, births autism asthma and several other health problems uh, the air pollutants can also damage the early brain of uh, a child there could also be death uh, of the infants due to pneumonia and the inhalation of air pollutants can also result into short term respiratory infections as well as pulmonary diseases among the infants and children the another effect could be uh, global warming we know very well that uh, global warming is a phenomenon that uh, happens because of excess release of various harmful gases into the atmosphere such as carbon dioxide methane oxides of nit uh, nitrogen etc and these gases when uh, comes to the atmosphere in excess they absorb uh, the solar radiation uh, more than uh, the natural uh, absorption rate and it results into increase in the earth's temperature so the increased level of co2 causes global warming with increased temperatures worldwide there will be increase in the sea levels as and melting of ice from the colder regions glaciers and icebergs it also led to the displacement and loss of habitat so global warming is directly related to uh, the higher concentration of air pollutants into the atmosphere the another effect of air pollution on environment could be in the form of uh, acid rain the harmful gases like uh, nitrogen dioxide oxides of sulfur are when released into the atmosphere during the burning of fossil fuels it causes formation of acid rain in the atmosphere when it rains the water droplets combine with these uh, air pollutants and become acidic and then falls on the ground in the form of acid rain the acid rain can cause great damage to humans animals crops buildings properties etc the another effect of air pollutants could be effect on the wildlife the toxic chemicals that are present in the air as air pollutants can force wildlife species to move uh, to a new place and change their habitat uh, the toxic pollutants deposit over the surface of water and it can also affect adversely the sea animals so the displacement of uh, wildlife the death of wildlife loss of biodiversity is uh, directly associated with higher concentration of air pollutants in the earth's atmosphere then another effect could be depletion of ozone layer all of us know very well that ozone uh, layer is uh, ozone is a gas that is uh, naturally present in the earth's atmosphere uh in the stratosphere layer of uh, earth's atmosphere and this ozone protects us from harmful ultraviolet rays which comes uh, through the cosmic world and these ultraviolet rays if not absorbed can reach to the earth surface and uh, cause various types of uh, health ailments such as uh, skin cancer and cataract as well as uh, mutation in the uh, genetic sequencing of living organisms so earth's ozone layer is depleting because of the presence of cfcs 
uh, which is chlorofluorocarbon as well as hydrochlorofluorocarbon in the atmosphere. These CFCs and hydro CFCs are released uh, into the atmosphere because of uh, various man made activities. So, the CFCs are air pollutants which are responsible for depletion of ozone layer in the Earth's atmosphere. The next effect of air pollution could be effect on buildings and properties and it is very much related to the formation of acid rain. Acid rain is a secondary air pollutant and it is responsible for damaging the buildings especially the marble made buildings for example Taj Mahal uh, is on the high risk of deterioration due to exposure to the acid rain. The acid present in the rain water uh, reacts with the marble and changes its color. Uh, that's why the marble made buildings are supposed to be uh, mostly affected because of uh, acid rain. The acid rain also results into corrosion of metal parts of uh, bridges, vehicles, etc. It also damages the aeroplanes rail tracks and fiber made structures. So these are all the effects of uh, air pollutants on uh, living organisms uh, as well as uh, the surrounding environment. In the next lecture we will talk about how to control these air pollution and uh, what are those techniques, methods and equipments which are currently uh, being used for controlling the concentration of uh, these air pollutants. And we will talk about some uh, general methods also which can be uh, adopted by each and every person for uh, uh, controlling the air pollution. So this all we will discuss in the next lecture. Uh, uh, we have uh, discussed uh, the classification of pollutants and effect of air uh, pollution in this lecture. So that was all about today's lecture. We will discuss more in the next lecture. Till then, thank you very much.